So we're here in this place and this is where I started to write the business plan. These ideas and I was I was taking these ideas back to back to Tony, back to Michelle and yeah, well I, I, I started off really uh, when I left Watmuffs, which was a printer's, um, I really, really wanted to go into, into youth work. Uh, so I, I became, um, I started doing football down on Eccleshill Field, uh, doing a bit of training actually. And all these kids were just coming out of nowhere and playing football. I then volunteered for the Gateway Centre, which wasn't built at the time. And I, I was a volunteer for the, the RCDP. And we did a planning for rail exercise and we put in various bids and I learned a lot about bid writing in that time. Um, and we got the money for the Gateway Centre. So I, I went, I decided to go back to uni uh, to take my, my, my degree in youth and community development. Um, I also took uh, qualifications in, in counselling. I did some political history, but I had to get my, my English and maths because I, I didn't have my English and maths. I got a job as the as the, the professional youth and community development worker for Jigsaw in Woodside and Butshaw. And I did that for three years. And I loved it. And my contract was coming to an end. Um, I, I had a, a qualification in, in football coaching, qualification in, in going up mountains and, and stuff like that with, with the kids. And, and, but I was, I was about to have a really big operation on my right ankle. And I, I was told that, that, I, I, that I would definitely won't work for a year. I was also told that I may, I may never cycle again. I was also told that I may walk with a stick. So for me, that was like, a massive shock. But I still wanted to carry on. So we, I, I ended up, because uh, I was in a band called the Cellar Rats and we were looking sort of practice, practice space and that was at the end of my, my contract. So we, we got Fagley uh, and we, at, we went to Fagley Youth Club. Uh, and I said to Fagley Youth Club, I said, look, if you give me a practice space, uh, I'll give you some free youth work. I'll write a few bids for you. So we had, we, we got burgled and some guitars were stolen and some stuff was stolen. We went to the TNA to, to try to, you know, appeal to people, you know, if you've got any guitars, can you donate some guitars? This is a, a voluntary project. So at that time, there was, a, there was an idea of the School of Rock. Now, Tony had read this story in the TNA. He was in a, a punk band called the, the Negatives, and he, he turned up and with a with a big bass cab, which is still in one of the practice rooms, uh, a couple of guitars, and he he wanted to help. He wanted to be, you know, he, he wanted to come and, and give something back, and that's what, exactly what Tony said to me. He says, "I want to give back." We opened first night. Uh, we opened, and, and the space was no bigger than a small garage, and I think we had 60, 70 young people night one and, and we said to pizza we only want this little bit we, we want this little bit we we won't encroach we won't we, we we won't do any of that stuff on night one the studio spilled into the youth club and the youth club spilled into the studio so michelle and michelle were working in residential care for want of a better word uh and at, at that time uh some of the activities that some of these people were were getting involved in were just a bit rubbish really both Michelle's had a, a much bigger vision of that, a much bigger vision of, of how that should be. But at this point, there was no thought about social care. There was no thought about working with adults with learning disabilities. I'd, I'd worked in that area before, uh, but I, 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 we, well, I, I certainly had no, no thought about that. And it was, it, was actually, it was actually Michelle and Michelle that said, can we bring some of our people down to, to, to have a go, you know? And it were like, yeah. We've got Edward Street up for grabs. Um, do you want it? It was, for us at the time, the rent was a lot. And that's the scary part. Because we, we've got this 10 grand. We've we got this, this 10 grand and we've got little bits of money coming in from the practice rooms. And we just started getting little bits of money in from doing, uh, doing sessions uh, for, for people from Michelle and Michelle were bringing. So... So yeah, things, things started to get a little bit more serious, really. In with the, the business plan, I, we, we also wrote <clears throat> the, uh, the constitution and we registered a company. So we got a company number, we, we had a constitution. Uh, there were quite a few people on the board at that point that didn't really stick with us, which is, which is you know, people come and go. Um, and that's when things started to get really, really serious. 
and then Tony went to Carcraft a bit, but they hated it. I could tell they hated it. He just didn't want to be there. You know, he wanted to be at Edward Street. So Edward Street came about, so my, my stepdad, Andrew, gave us, gave us a bit of brass. And then Michelle's dad, he, he's, he's a builder, well, he's retired now. And basically, we had these two families that come together. They're six grand. That's where it, that's where it started. Six grand, a pile of plasterboards, a big pile of carpets of which I were moving around. So we were looking then for a retail assistant. And then, uh, and then my daughter, Samantha, said, well, I know somebody called Andrew. No, no, poor old Andrew didn't get the job, it should be said, because he was, uh, I quote, overqualified. So Edward Street got through. We, we, we had like three practice rooms, a bit of a reception and a bit of a recording space. And then more money started coming in through some of the works that we were doing. Yeah, so then we, we, we knew that we had to find a bigger place. Back to fear. And then we found Kate Street. Now, Tony, Michelle and Michelle really, really didn't like Kate Street. <laughs> When I first saw it, um, I was jumping up and down. That I really, really wanted it because I, I, I fell in, fell in love with the building, even the pigeons. We carried on looking, and, and Tony was Tony was running the show back up at Edward Street, and we were carrying on looking, carrying on looking, and I, and I just wanted another look. I wanted them to come down, and the, the landlord said, "We'll, we'll clean the top floor," and, and we did. We cleaned the top floor, and people started to feel a little bit better about it. Uh, so, so we agreed. We, we took it. And it should be said that, that, that the money that we saved, uh, our new landlord took, took a lot of that money. So I, I went in to develop Kate Street. Tony carried on at Edward Street. We were ordering the Kingspan, so I was looking to source walls really, really cheap. We couldn't afford plasterboard. We couldn't afford doors. I got, I got the doors donated. They're still hung on the thing now. Uh, so, so I was picking up doors, I was picking up Kingspan, getting it delivered and balling Kingspan up onto the top floor. So I think the top floor and the middle floor was the first. I had a, I had a, a work crew that, that came with the landlord because we agreed he was going to do some of those works. And there were like three rats and they, every morning I saw these three rats and they were like, they were cool. They were like, and we had an arrangement because I don't mind rats. But it's only when they move in the corner of my eye, they, they, I'm like, oh, come on, boys. They had to eventually, you know, I mean, they were, you know, every morning you come in, morning, morning. These rats were like, they were like chill. Uh, but um, I think somebody who lives in, uh, lives in uh, Little Germany got a cat. And I think that put paid to the rats. They didn't want to be anywhere near that cat. They, uh, I literally, at the, at the back of the office, I handballed loads of sewage that were all down the side of the building. I literally handballed that out. I was living like a savage, basically. I, I was like living off the grid. I was like Bear grills. I mean, this, where we are now, is really, really clean. This is it's a nice place to be. Much more comfortable than Kate Street was. And I, and I remember, so there, there was a transition, Andrew. I remember, I remember the exits coming down. I think I'd almost finished the middle floor at that point. So they came down. I remember they did the practice on the stage, which was really great. It was lovely to have electricity. And I was a bit worried. And I remember, in fact, I think I remember saying to you, Andrew, can you just keep them in this part of the building? Because there were other, there were other stuff going on. We still had the scaffolding up. And I, rem I, remember, I remember reporting back to the other directors. And, and at that point, we must have been hemorrhaging money at a rate. Uh, and and they, they just wanted the building up and running. That's, that's, and I get that. And it's, it, you know, like it's, it's only, there's only so much I can do. There's only so fast I can work. And, you know, but, you know, and then... Totally, and then, and then the ceilings in the, in, the, in the upstairs building, we all did that. So me, uh, uh, Tony and Michelle and Ed at the time, we put the... And when you look at it now, I look at it and I think, maybe we need to redo it. And, you know, how can I put this? Because members of my family uh, were, were affected by this. But I thought it was all over. I thought... I, I did. I thought everything we'd done. I thought all our staff would be would be made unemployed. They have families. They have children. They have lives. Yeah, that these things were just beyond beyond our control. And I remember meeting with the, the directors, and and we were we were yeah we 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 were we were trying to find a try to think of what to do and I, I honestly thought that many of the staff would be furloughed I honestly thought many of the staff would have to move on now 
you know, back to the the, the business plan. The, the the thing is, I, you know, I know about business plans, and I know I know about social models. I know about I know all about social modelling, and that's what I studied at uni. That's exactly capacity building, social modelling. How do you build a social model around this? We've never had this. A pandemic. The human race might not even survive this, let alone social modelling. We were, we were looking to rewriting our entire business plan on the fly. Many companies have tried this and many companies have gone under. And I, I, re I remember the massive pressure that you were put under and other people in is say, right, Andrew, we want to, to take our entire business and we want to put it on a website. And all the staff, right, are going to go onto this website. They're going to work from home and this is what we're going to do. And, and then at that point, I felt really useless. And, you know, because Tony, Tony then managed that. I didn't know how to do that. That wasn't my skill set. That was, and for the first time in the history of this business, it was like I didn't have a role. And I feel guilty for saying this because so many people came off a lot, lot worse, you know, but it took the life of me. It took, it took the soul of me. Yeah. Up to that, we were doing live videos, happy birthday message with, with cake. We were dancing on the stage. We were doing all these things. That's me. That's, that's me. That's, I'm that guy, you know, and, and to say, right, no more dancing, no more singing, no more of this, no more of that. We're not doing that anymore. We're not doing live videos anymore. And, and for me, it was like, I'm, I'm, I'm a very practical person. I'm a very hands-on person. I don't think at, perhaps at strategic level like Tony does. And you absolutely need that. You, you, without that, you, you haven't got anything. Michelle had had a conversation with commissioners and Tony about the lift. And that, those conversations had carried on. So then we thought, right, everybody's, doing this should we do a refurb well my ears pricked up yeah. am i allowed could we um could i should i am i allowed could we could i could we am i allowed you know and it just turns out that 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 building you know uh builders and joiners and electricians were allowed to to work in lockdown we we well we got the money which was really great. Um, we'd saved some money. So we knew, we'd already consulted with the staff about what the middle floor, about what they thought that the, the middle floor could look like. So he came to work with me. We had a small team because that was important. We just got on with it. It, it was good. It, it was difficult as well because there were certain things that you couldn't get hold of. Um, gypsum and aggregate, <laughs> that was uh, you know, timber. Things like that, they became scarce. You had to pre-order materials and then you had to wait in a line to get the materials. And then, you know, so, so everything took two times longer, three times longer than, than it would normally take. And now we're getting home and it was like a, it was like a scene out of, uh, you know, that bit with E.T. where they've got E.T. in the thing and the, the big tubes and, you know, so Michelle's sort of stripping me down at the side of the building and, right, shoving it in the, in the washing machine, going instantly and getting a bath and a shower. T Tony did a wonderful job. And he was the one that, that, that led that. He was the one that, that managed that. I did the, the refurb. Um... And it was the first time ever that, that Tony and I, I think, wasn't joined at the hip. That affected us. You know, that, that all of a sudden, that we're working sort of remotely from each other. Um, and we were, we were trying to catch up, really. We, we, we were trying to, you know, they, they always say, oh, communication, communication. But we'd never been in this situation before. And, and, and for the first time ever, Tony's job was very different to my job. Both jobs equally as important. You guys came back to a much improved building. Um, but, you know, when I was building that, I thought, I thought you were never going to come back. I, I really did. I, I thought, are, are they, am I going to see people again? Is it going to be filled with, with song and laughter again and happiness? And I think the one thing that Psalm is very, very good at getting emotional is... Um, 
somebody asked me once, what are you selling? I said joy. We're selling joy. Buy the buckets. Have some joy. That's, that's what we're selling. I, th I think we all, I think we all suffer from depression now and again and a low mood, I don't think. I don't think anybody, any one of us can say that we wouldn't at some point in our lives. Um, so for me to go from having all that fun <laughs> to sitting at home, I, I don't do well at home. I'm, I'm this. <laughs> I'm out on my bike, I'm, 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 I'm out walking, I'm out playing with my grandkids. I'm, I, I play out, Andrew. I've always played out. I want to play out. I don't, I don't want to be stuck inside. Right, well, SOS came out of an idea that, that actually Tony had, would you believe? You would have thought I'd have thought that, wouldn't you? But no, no, that's uh, definitely Tony's, uh, Tony's idea. It's not as if it has an office as such. It does have a hub that we share with, with the Into Employment guys and, and so on. Uh, but we're rarely in it. And I like that. So what SOS does is we work with adults with learning disabilities and we go mountain biking. We go trekking and walking up to the top wyverns and, you know, uh, we're blessed right here where we are now. We're literally probably, uh, we're, we're in Eshalt Woods and we are less than two and a half miles from Bradford Town Centre. But SOS is about, about helping people uh, access the community as independently as possible and again it's about it's about me trying to help people enjoy things that I take for granted the education hub that came about a uh, long time ago actually uh, we we wrote a bid with again the national lottery and we got I think about how much would that be 40, 40 or grand and again, you know, the difference between Tony and myself, I were like, that's a really good project. So I wrote a project. X amount of people, least I've had, a couple of interns, all get certificates, job done, well done. Yeah, all ed, which is uh, another one of my previous jobs. So it's uh, anyway, so, so, but Tony, Tony being the strategic amongst, amongst us, like, no, this could be like, we could literally do this all the time. And I'm like, yeah, I think you're right. So that's where the, the idea began. That's where it was first thought of, if you like. I think Lee wrote the book on it. I think that would be fair to say. He literally wrote the book on it. Um, and that's where the, now the education hub is the, the big rollout of that. Uh, and I think, it's, I think it's definitely Psalm's next big thing. And once again, I think we do it really well.